Uh, so hello and welcome to the Advanced Propulsion and Power Lab. I'm Todd Lowe, I'm a co-director here at the lab uh, and also an associate professor in aerospace and ocean engineering. Uh, it's really great to, to have the opportunity to give you a tour of the lab and show you some of the things here. I want to start uh, the discussion and tour uh, by mentioning that we have actually in this laboratory a couple of full-time professionals, and I'm standing beside of one of them. Uh, this is Eric Greenman. If you wouldn't mind, maybe to introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Eric Greenman. I'm, um, I'm new to the APPL lab. I started last February, and um, I'm definitely excited about new prospects. Um, we, currently, we have seven faculty that serve here, and we have a combined team of 40 students, I believe. And, um, and we're in transition of trying to turn this um, lab into a world-class facility. So, so, so far, so good. We have a very, very uh, a wealth of team members here and with a lot of knowledge. And um, just like a welcome you aboard. Great. Yeah, thank you for that, Eric. So, uh, it, it, the, this, I wanted to share just a little bit about what APPL is, Advanced Propulsion and Power Lab, and give you a little bit of its history and some of the things we do as well. So this lab uh, came to be for a few reasons, uh, but it's about seven years old now. And uh, if, if we go back about eight or nine years ago, there was a renewed push at Virginia Tech for propulsion-related research. And uh, part of that push was because of some industry commitments. So uh, I wanted to just mention we have a couple of industry-focused uh, uh, partnerships. One of them is with Pratt & Whitney. We have a center of excellence at Virginia Tech. And then the other thing that was happening uh, that was really important about that time I was mentioning was a relationship with Rolls-Royce. And so if you don't know, Rolls-Royce makes aircraft engines and marine engines and things like that. But really they're, they're aircraft engines division that uh, had approached Virginia Tech and uh, there was a lot of momentum with uh, getting work going here. And so about that time that we began working with Rolls-Royce, there was also this, uh, uh, th this opportunity through the College of Engineering to build this laboratory. And I think one of the things to point out, uh, as Eric mentioned a minute ago, is that there's seven faculty members. These are not just faculty in aerospace and ocean engineering. They're also mechanical engineering. And really this um, laboratory represents a college level asset. So it's, it's a really big deal in the college and it's giving us a lot of capability to do propulsion-focused research. Um, so to speak to that, then I've already mentioned two of our very important industry partners. There's several others that I've not mentioned. We also do lots of uh, research for the government. So uh, Office of Naval Research is a really big sponsor, Office, uh, uh, Air Force Office of Scientific Research. Uh, there's also a little bit of work for uh, the Army, uh, some work for the Department of Energy, uh, and I'm sure I'm missing some others as well. So pretty diverse portfolio of things that go on here. When this uh, lab was originally built, it also looked at some of the uh, synergies and advantages that we had at Virginia Tech. So one of them is that we operate full scale, full size gas turbine engines here, not for test or not for certification, but for research. So one of the really cool, I think, things that we do is that uh, I can be in my office on campus, think up a crazy idea of a new way to measure something, let's say. I can propose that to someone in the government. We'll come over here and use some of the small laboratories to prove out the basic idea. And then we can take that idea and we can apply it on one of the rigs I'll show you in just a minute. After that, it gets exciting enough that we say, hey, let's try it on the engine. And at that point, we're already working with, let's say, the Navy and also maybe Rolls-Royce or Pratt & Whitney in order to see a pathway to actually use that on a real system. So the thing that excites me about APPL is that we really go from the very basic idea all the way to impacting the products that are out in the field. And so uh, I think what you'll see in this tour are some of the capabilities that help us to scale that and to reach those different levels. What kind of things can you get made in the machine shop versus what would you need to outsource for a project? There's a pretty large array of different jobs that we can actually uh, take care of here uh, at, at, at the machine shop. So the limitations really come down to 
uh, if you need to do uh, very large pieces, all right, so, so that would be something that we just don't have the fixturing maybe to hold. Uh, or there's certain types of exotic metals that are really tough to, to machine. Having said that, the capabilities are quite broad. There's, there's welding capability here, uh, machining, uh, milling, lathing. Um, so one of the great things for the students is you're running an experiment here, you really need to get your results, something breaks all of a sudden or you realize that when fixturing this, you would love to be in the wind tunnel an extra half inch downstream. So how do you do that? You need a little slot, let's say. So you come to Randall and he is really an agile professional that can come in, alter your hardware, have you up and going uh, quite quickly. And that really covers everything from really simple apparatus all the way up to things that we do in the hypersonic wind tunnel. It could be highly, highly precision. So I think the answer to your question is there's, there's a wide array of things that we do and just if it gets a little too large, then in that case, the beauty is we do have a lot of really great local machine shops. We're standing outside right now of, of one of our most active laboratories. Uh, there are two very active rigs. There's one is a, a, a free heated supersonic jet. We use that for all, uh, for, for lots and lots of uh, types of research. It was originally built to study supersonic jet noise and find ways to reduce that. There's another rig that's uh, getting uh, lots of use now, it's a hypersonic wind tunnel. Uh, the hypersonic wind tunnel will go up to Mach 7, and so it, it uh, can do that anywhere from Mach 2 up to 7, depending on which nozzle is swapped in. And so anytime you visit Advanced Propulsion and Power Lab, you might see a different set of rigs that are set up and ready to go to conduct research. Um, this is very, very important for us to be agile in order to meet the needs of our industry customers, also our government sponsors. And so the, the uh, rigs that you'll see uh, in the lab in just a moment, uh, there, are, there are actually wheels on the supersonic free jet rig, allows us to move it in and out that can make space for, uh, for other experiments. And this is copied throughout our entire laboratory. So it's really about doing research agilely. And if you were to come here and do research here, it gives you a chance to build your own rig and build it in a modular manner that you can get really amazing data and uh, use some of the resources that we have here in the facility. Great, so we're uh, uh, now standing in this uh, very active test cell I was talking about. In fact, it's so active that we have folks who are, who are, are, are working right by me here uh, on uh, the supersonic free jet that I was just mentioning. And then there's also a hypersonic tunnel further over to my right. And so these rigs, uh, I was already mentioning, are extremely modular. And uh, at any time that you might come in here, there's going to be some other experiment that's set up. And this is all by design. It's really what we what we uh, what we hope to have happen. Um, there's activity in this room virtually all year long. Uh, this will happen anywhere from very uh, short entries where people may come for a week up to uh, folks who have set up for, for instance, there was a project lesson all summer that people were using the, the hypersonic window. Well, you mentioned that this rig is modular. What kind of configurations have you run it in? Absolutely. So the supersonic free jet I mentioned was built to study supersonic jet noise. It turned out to have a lot of other uses. And um, one, one, one really interesting that I bring up was that the Navy was having some trouble with uh, the deck of aircraft carriers, notwithstanding the heat transfer coming from the B-22 Osprey to the Navy slash Marines. And so uh, I actually worked with a smart scholar who was here at Virginia Tech who used a corrugated deck panel from the Navy that then they placed that by this jet which provided heat, convective heat loads that we showed were the same heat loads that the B-22 Osprey provides. And then we made all the temperature measurements, et cetera, using uh, basically some of the, the, the same sort of hardware. Another good example is actually uh, a, a probe set up uh, here right now is that we use the same jet to look at the performance of sensors, the temperature sensors. Uh, the current one is a particle concentration sensor, velocity sensors, pressure sensors. So uh, there's, there's tons of different uses of this. We really think of this rig as being a hot gas generator. There's an electric heater that's connected to it that anyone can use as a user of this facility. Uh, provides 192 kilowatts of heat and then uh, we can use that high pressure, hot air, and 
high. But we're modifying this rig such that we can uh, accelerate particles up to about 0.75. And uh, we're going to be using glass beads. And they're going to enter a probe, and we're trying to characterize this probe such that when we stick it in the engine later, we'll understand the, uh, the values the measurements we're getting. And we'll be using sand for that in the future. And Thomas can talk more about uh, our blow down or our shake down work. Yeah, so right now we're basically preparing a new what we call blow down this coming Friday. Basically, what it's going to be is it's not, we're not actually doing our experiment, but we would just want to make sure that everything works properly, that we know how to run the jet, that our probe can sample particles properly. And so that's what we're preparing for right now. Um, we're going to be filming everything so that we can see how our probe holds up and also see we're going to be using a flow meter to measure the volumetric flow rate that's being captured by the probe. And we're basically going to be using the camera to make sure that that flow meter works correctly. And so overall, we just want to make sure that we know what we're doing. Yeah, I just want to add that this project is, is really important for some work that we're doing for the Navy, for the, for the Office of Naval Research, where uh, we want to understand the impacts that particles have on uh, the performance and the reliability of jet engines, so turbo shaft and turbo, turbo fan engines. And uh, to help these engines to have longer lives and, and have less cost to the Navy, and then most of all, to avoid catastrophic failures of, of, of engines in the field. Um, we're now in a combustion cell, and so this is where work that goes on um, that we're, we're doing uh, doing hydrogen or, or, or usually hydrocarbon combustion. There are two major rigs here. The one that, that you can see uh, now that I'm standing beside of is a really interesting and very new rig. Uh, it's a solid fuel ramjet simulator, so a ramjet engine simulator that has been uh, designed by Dr. Young's group and, and, and uh, built and now is being commissioned. So the actual business part of this is happening right down in, in this tube. And uh, this is work that uh, they're trying to understand some of the fuel properties and combustion properties of solid fuel and link that to the performance, uh, stability, uh, reliability of ramjet engines. And so it's really uh, uh, pushing the state of the art for what we understand for, for these sorts of systems. One thing I did want to point out with this rig, I think it again highlights our philosophy in this laboratory, which is to have modular experiments. If you were here two months ago, uh, you wouldn't have seen anything beyond about this, uh, the, 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 the coupler that's, that's kind of right there. And so all of this has been built. We actually modified the way that the rig uh, uh, exhausts outside. And all of this uh, is, is now ready to be up and going. If you were here six months ago, there was an enormous rig that took up the entire space that we see here. That rig had done a lot of really important research that led to the particle research that I was speaking about earlier that's being done by the Navy. So it was a precursor rig that helped us to be ready to do the full engine work that we're now doing uh, in collaboration with, uh, uh, with the Navy. And so this modular sort of idea is really what enables us as a group of seven faculty and 40 uh, graduate students who are always involved to uh, be agile and to uh, have these diverse capabilities. Okay, so thanks a ton for taking the time and, and uh, checking out the Advanced Propulsion and Power Lab. It's uh, certainly been my pleasure to, to share it with you. Um, I'd just like to offer if there was anything that you saw that you have any questions about or you'd like to know anything more about, about what we, we've done here, uh, there's there's uh, lots of other rigs I don't even have the time to share with you, so I would love to hear from you. Feel free to reach out to me over phone or email, and uh, I'd, be, I'd be happy to get back and have a discussion. Thank you.